welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. This is module number 9, lecture number 1 and today we have a very interesting lecture on netiquette. It's quite contemporary, it's quite relevant to know what are the norms of using internet in terms of communication. Now in this lecture you will learn and understand what is netiquette. So the definition of the term netiquette and what is it meant exactly? Why netiquette? So why should we use netiquette norms at all? Is it really necessary that we should use those norms or can we do without those norms? So why netiquette? And after that, I will be discussing in detail about some of the basic norms of netiquette. Now before we start, let's look at this quotation from a very reputed author who deals with internet and computer, Sidney J. Harris. He says, the real danger is not that computers will begin to think like men, but that men will begin to think like computers. Look at this. The real danger, he says, is not that computers will begin to think like men. Not that computers which are endowed, endowed with artificial intelligence will start behaving like uh, human beings. He says that's not a problem, that's no issue. But what is the real problem? The real problem starts only when men will start beginning to think like computers. What does it mean? If men will start functioning like a computer, like a machine, losing all human qualities, losing all human values, then he says that's the real problem that should concern us. Now you can understand the relevance of netiquette now. Why netiquette is important because if men will start behaving like computers, he will not follow this netiquette norms. To remind human beings that even while, compu while using internet for communication, one should still remember the human values and should not behave like a machine. We need to remind human beings again and again some of the norms which are relevant for netiquette. Now, before we go to the norms, what is netiquette? Netiquette is a portmanteau word. What is a portmanteau word? Portmanteau word is just like a portmanteau suitcase. It's combined of two parts. Two words combined together and then made into a single word and it gives a single meaning. Now what are the two words which are combined together here? These are internet with etiquette or network with etiquette. So you have internet network combined with etiquette. What is the meaning of this word etiquette? Etiquette is generally used as an umbrella term for rules governing socially and culturally acceptable behavior. Now, any rules generally which deal with the general principles of behavi behaving in a society in a very culturally acceptable manner are considered etiquette. Now, when we talk about netiquette, combining this with etiquette and uh, internet or network, what we actually mean is we refer to the correct, polite, acceptable social official, professional norms, behavioral patterns and expected decorum. Decorum is the manner in which one should perform oneself, present oneself in the internet for using the internet or the cyberspace for communication purposes. Now cyberspace, again we are using it as the space that is controlled by computer or internet the imaginary space in which we are all sending emails where it is not done in a physical sense but in the cybernetic sense. To continue with the question why netiquette? Today we are living in an internet age and the internet thankfully has really contracted the world into a global village. What do we mean by a global village? Just like in a village the message is very quickly transmitted from one part of the world to the other. Traveling from one part of the world to the other has become just a very easy business. But 
the question is whether communication has become much more effective or not no that still remains a question the problem is communication has become a much more complicated process if we compare the communication that's happening today with the communication that the primitive man had with less symbols less images and mostly using pictures mostly using non verbal form of communication if you look at that and then if we compare that with today with multi channels and communication at the speed of lightning now if we compare all these things do we really have effective communication so that is very much doubted now despite the flow and exchange of information in various channels as usenet mailing lists so many email ids one can have blogs forums and chats and so many social networking sites like facebook and all that the question still remains whether communication is taking place in all these forms in an effective manner or not now once again netiquette is important to have effective communication in the internet the internet what has it done in its attempt to enlarge the vistas of human mind has actually narrowed down values of the human heart no doubt it has enlarged the vistas of human mind human mind has gone beyond what was uh, never thought before but what about the values of human heart it has contracted so people who appear to be intellectuals people who appear to be advanced in terms of scientific thinking appear to be quite narrowed down at the level of feeling at the level of expressing one's emotion now today if you look at this scenario there are more hate mails people write express their negative feelings using internet there are more sites that violate privacy policies what does it mean they are using unethical means they are losing their ethical groundings and frequently we hear about hacking of email identities so people suddenly saying that uh, somebody sent through my email identity and that doesn't belong to me or my id was hacked and i changed the password now it is safe so you do not send to this id or whatever sent before in my id you do not take that seriously sometimes people send email through one's id after hacking it saying that the person is seriously ill and then demand certain amount of money and close friends and relatives send money now where have you come to when this kind of uh, hacking is happening in email identities the ethical grounding has been lost the gradually shrinking down of human heart and human values people misunderstand and lose precious relationships built for years by a casual click of send button years of relationship built 30 years 40 years relationship built inadvertently without thinking without giving a second thought people press the send button and the mail goes and the other person is offended because of some inadvertent use of some words why netiquette sending emails has become the most used and abused form of cyber communication in fact when i talk about netiquette i am generally referring to all the norms that govern the use of internet communication but to focus on one aspect of internet communication for our lecture we will focus on email communication now email has been much used and much abused in in terms of cyber communication in terms of business communication for instance people are generally trying to write business letters and learn the nuances of sending effective letters some companies even have a training program in which the recruited new employees are given training in terms of communication skills they are told how to write good business letters they are again and again given models examples of writing effective business letters in a sense they are trained but 
when we ask the question are people really trying to write emails certainly no somehow there is an impression that one can just write something and then send it so is training really required many people think that no training is not required but which is not true actually in case of email sending emails no formal training is given at least this lecture on netiquette would try to create an awareness of certain norms which are quite relevant when one is trying to communicate using the internet so when the training is not given for sending emails what happens emails are thus written in an impromptu manner without any proper plan without the norms of writing a letter without thinking of a beginning middle and end without thinking of a subject line people just write in a very impromptu manner and then they start writing abruptly suddenly they think of writing an email and then suddenly they send it and often without even giving a second thought to the aspect of communication involved in the transaction process people think that it's just sending but communication as we understood from the previous lectures is a two way process it's not just sending it's also receiving and then getting positive feedback so people do not think of the transaction process involved in this and then they send it in a very impromptu and hurried manner what happens the result invariably is miscommunication when there is mis miscommunication there is total anarchy there is no order in terms of communication people misunderstand each other they ruin the relationships they ruin the business practice that's been going on for decades and all of a sudden just because of one email everything is closed everything comes to a defunct state so this is the reason why i'm telling again and again netiquette is quite important and relevant now this kind of miscommunication could be possibly avoided if people learn understand and follow simple norms for communication in cyberspace in the following slides i'm just going to discuss about some of the simple norms but nonetheless they are the basic norms anybody who would like to make internet communication using email effective should follow these norms let me begin with the most important and the most simple of all the norms do not forget that the receiver is a human being now this looks sometimes ridiculous and sometimes people think that oh don't we remember that uh, all the time we are sending to a human being as i said at the beginning in the introductory quotation we tend to think but then we consciously do not think we often forget we often do not even realize the fact that we are sending it to a human being we often think just before we are sending just because we are sitting before a machine before computer we also tend to reflect that mechanical attitude in sending them so do not forget that the receiver is a human being often when people type a message on the computer and mail it using the internet connection they tend to forget this aspect that the other end also there is a person who is sitting who is a human being so what do people do people write curt messages hurtful messages that can hurt the sentiments of the receiver no polished words are used no courteous remarks are used no proper salutations are used there's no proper complimentary close now what happens it looks very curt very rude and the other person feels offended now beyond the blank computer screen one needs to empathize with feelings of the receiver what do i mean by empathize empathizing is feeling into one should get into the shoes of the other person one should imagine one should assume how would i feel if i were at the other end and if i were sitting at the other end and if i were to read this email how would i respond 
will I be happy to receive this mail? Will I feel hurt? Now, if the answer is in negative, it's definitely important that you spend some more time, which is worthwhile, in restructuring the letter, in rewriting the email communication, and then use your empathized feelings to add words that will make the other person feel pleasant while receiving the email. Now, compare this with direct oral communication. When uh, this is sent through email, computer is acting as the modem or the channel and then it is sent through internet. In direct oral communication or face to face communication, both the sender as well as the receiver, they are facing each other. Now, what is the advantage? Now, when the sender is sending message to the receiver, when the sender is looking at the other person, the sender can always modify, alter the message according to the facial expression of the receiver. The receiver can give non-verbal communication using the facial expression or the receiver can even verbally connote his or her interest in the subject matter, lack of interest in the subject matter, antipathy, hatred towards the subject matter, all are possible. So in oral communication, direct communication, there is face to face interaction, direct involvement and here one can easily alter the expressions, messages. Now compare this with email communication, the face to face aspect is absent. Now what happens when the face to face aspect is absent, you are not able to decode the expressions of the other person and you are sending at a time when the person is not uh, very much before the computer, the person comes at his or her own disposal to open the computer. So absolutely the person is absent you have no mechanism of decoding the expression of the other person. So it is absolutely important you think of this, put yourself into the shoes of the other person and try to cut across the impersonal, the objective feeling, the machine like feeling that comes, you cut across that and try to create a personal appeal. Even the modern business letters generally call for this personal appeal. Although it is supposed to be highly professional, it calls for this kind of personal appeal. And how can you give this personal appeal? You can use suitable words or even you can use the so-called emoticons. Emoticon is another portmanteau word which means emotion and icons. The emotions which are expressed in terms of images, icons. So you can use those images to indicate your uh, mood. Sometimes you are in a jovial mood. So put one smiley there. Sometimes you are really sad, hurt. There's another smiley that's indicating that you are crying. Now this will just at least tell the other person in a light hearted manner what you are feeling. Just to continue with uh, this aspect of not forgetting that the receiver is a human being, smileys or emoticons can be used to indicate your mood or to reduce the monotony of the message as well. So if you simply type keys as colon dash or hyphen and then this bracket and then when you press enter it automatically gives you smileys. And today there are so many uh, client servers who have actually put the smileys ready made. You don't even have to type them. You have to just select the icon, press it and automatically it will be added in your mail. Now what is the advantage of such additions? Such additions also tell the receiver how much care you take in communicating your message with the right tone and attitude right tone and attitude. Your attitude is reflected very much using the emoticons. So just to recapitulate and put it in one sentence, the first basic norm of nitty grit, 
Consideration for others. Consideration for others is thus the cardinal netiquette principle one should always bear in mind, which is also a general rule in terms of communication. But in terms of internet, email communication, consideration for others is the cardinal principle one should always keep in mind. Now, the second norm, the second basic, the second simple norm. Remember, written words can be stored permanently. Remember, written words can be stored permanently. What does it imply? It implies so many things. Basically, first, when it is the oral communication, the orally spoken words, unless it is recorded, stored for proper use, generally most people do not think of the recording aspect when something is spoken, it is lost immediately. But when something is written, the written words can be stored permanently. They are stored, recorded, can be kept forever. So what does it mean? Since these words can be stored permanently, one should be very careful in choosing the right words for communication. One can read this so many times. One can read this after 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. So, one has to be very careful in choosing the right words. So that, when a person is reading it for the 100th time, even then the person should feel pleasant about reading it. The email sent casually can return with so much malignity. If it is sent without giving proper thought, it comes back with lot of ill will, lot of bad feelings that the sender regrets throughout his life for having sent that one thoughtless mail. The sender sends it in a hurry, thinking that nothing will happen. The other person is offended, sending that with ill will, lot more hurtful words have been added and then the sender regrets for a lifetime that why didn't I send another 2-3 minutes extra to modify my words so that this miscommunication could have been averted, could have been avoided. The next norm, ironically the receiver controls the sent email. Note this, ironically the receiver controls the sent email. Why do I say ironically? It's ironic because generally we think whenever we do something, whenever we initiate an action, we always think that we have control, absolute control over that action. Now here it is ironic, it's conversely the opposite that happens. Once you send the email, you have no control over your emails once you press that send button. Once sent, ironically, it is the receiver who has absolute control over your mails. You do not have any control. So, the receiver decides. You do not decide. The receiver decides. Even if you have requested the receiver that the mail should be deleted immediately, but it is the receiver who will decide whether to delete or store the mail for future use. The receiver can even tell a lie to you by saying that, yeah, yes, of course, I deleted the mail, but keep it and then use it after 10 years, much to your embarrassment. The receiver can also use it against you, send it to numerous others, get a printout of it and post it on public notice boards and put you to shame, such as one uh, uh, frivolous uh, letter, a kind of love letter expressing one's emotion, one employee writing to another employee and then the other employee taking a printout and giving it to the boss and the boss putting it on the notice board and causing embarrassment to the person and the person may even have to leave that post because he is put to shame and then he has no face to show before others. One email can just ruin the job also. So you have to be careful again in sending a message that would embarrass you if you shared with others or exposed to the general public. The next norm, be ethically correct. Be ethically correct. When we say ethical, 
we mean to say be good be morally upright do what is good avoid what is bad do what is legal avoid what is illegal do what is politically correct avoid what is politically wrong or in simple spiritual terms they say that do something that you would always like god to know or don't do something which god would not like you to do but what happens when it comes to email writing some of the old saying all is fair in love and war appears to be modified to suit the mindset of many internet users who think that all is fair in love war and cyberspace anything goes write anything send anything nothing happens so that seems to be the attitude or at least that is what many network users believe when they post materials which are unethical or communicate by lowering their ethical standards for the internet while unethical means may be in short term gains so why do you send unethical means you sometimes have fun you have some gain but this gain is bound to be short term temporary to gain a truly professional image one has to maintain high ethical standards in cyberspace too sometimes some people ask do we really have standards in cyberspace yes of course and especially if you want a highly professional image you should have this high ethical standards and because of the risk of being caught in unethical practice is very high today nothing escapes the media nothing escapes cyberspace nothing escapes internet so everything is seen everything is caught everything is captured everything is stored everything is reproduced everything is recorded everything is used by multiple users now because of this fact and because of also the fact that if caught it can damage reputation gain for years one should be ethically correct the next norm makes sense though it is difficult to you might be wondering what am i talking about won't you make sense when you are just sending an email i am implying yes of course i am saying that yes most of the times it appears that you don't think of making sense or to put it in another manner it's rather easy to make nonsense in written communication it doesn't take much time doesn't take much preparation to cause nonsense especially when writes when a person is writing whatever comes to one's mind without bothering to know whether what is expressed clearly reflects one's thoughts it actually causes nonsense making sense is difficult you need to think about it you need to work on it you need to revise if you really want to make sense as it means curtailing some bad writing habit accumulated over a period of time now when i say bad writing habit i'm not blaming any individual because this is something that has been accumulated over a period of time so from childhood most of us have acquired lot of bad habits especially in terms of writing now those habits creep in when we are sending the email now those habits should be curtailed and if one is conscious about it and if one thinks let me make sense let me not make nonsense it's very easy to do that what can one do to make sense try to avoid worn out phrases phrases which have no relevance anymore which do not make any sense in the context it looks very poetic but that in the given context the word has no meaning so remove it idiomatic expressions have special meaning put in an appropriate form it could be very effective but when it doesn't suggest anything remove them even metaphors and similes 
unless you mean something so avoid using them and if you cannot use them properly it can even confuse the reader and it can lead to miscommunication so use simple words generally with short sentence constructions instead of flowery polysyllable words long and complicated sentences the next norm of netiquette spend an extra minute to save an hour of the receiver spend an extra minute to save an hour of the receiver what do i mean by this <clears throat> most of the times people do not spend more time in revising or even in relooking at the email that one is supposed to send but extra time should be spent on editing the text should be spent on checking the spelling inserting emoticons to express one's right tone and attitude making use of punctuation marks many people write email without punctuation marks dividing lengthy matter into readable paragraphs and give lot of space white space in between remembering to type a descriptive subject line and finally by not sending an unsolicited and irrelevant mail now let us briefly look at each of these aspects in the following sub headings keep it short keep it short in fact generally as a communication principle we say that you keep it short and simple as far as email is concerned first remember that you should keep it short <coughs> when i say short i mean to say that keep your emails focused in content and short in length focused to content and it's short in length why it is important that it is short in length because people generally do not have time to read long mails there are people when they open it and then when they see lengthy mails they just delete it they don't have time or when they know that such a person so and so will always send lengthy mails they develop an attitude a negative attitude of course against that person's emails and some people even put that under spam folder so the lengthy mails generally are not read so the thumb rule is that if you cannot convey an idea effectively in a short paragraph you can never do the same in a long essay if you really want to show that you are skilled in writing your skill is not in writing many number of words showing that you can write lengthy paragraphs but your skill is in showing that you can write short concise precise sentences with clarity with focused content and you can express your ideas succinctly clearly within that small short content not in writing lengthy emails but in case an email has to be significantly and justifiably lengthy owing to the nature of the subject matter some legal document some official transaction it has to be lengthy because it has various components so deliberately you need not prune it deliberately you need not make it short which has to be justifiably lengthy then what you can do you can use subheadings which means you are dividing the long lengthy one into small paragraphs and not only making them into small paragraphs but you are also giving a heading small heading combined with the paragraph divisions and spaces in between paragraphs to make it easy for reading and understanding if it is crammed without any space and if more spaces are given and if you look at both document the one that has more spaces will definitely get the readers attention so it is important that 
if required you still write lengthy emails but then you use subheadings you use paragraph divisions and you keep lot of spaces now the next important norm and in a sense it's a very important norm pay attention to subject lines pay attention to subject lines <coughs> now i can tell as far as email is concerned i can tell a person tell me the subject lines that you keep sending i can tell you who you are i can just look at the subject line and then tell what kind of a person you are so what does it mean subject lines apart from describing the inner content of the matter have much to do much to tell about you as a person whether you are sloppy whether you are casual whether you are a philippine person whether you are uncouth or sincere serious meticulous thorough in giving details dedicated professional sophisticated and stylish i can understand all these things just from the subject line now having said this the worst subject line that an email can have is no subject this is the worst subject line that an email can have that is no subject now what do i mean by no subject that is the email is either sent in a hurry without subject line or the subject is just not thought of the person doesn't bother to give a subject line now in both cases the sender is unmindful of the precious time the receiver has to send in opening reading and understanding the subject and quite often realize that it is an irrelevant message that needs to be deleted so the subject should clearly express the content at the outset giving freedom to the receiver to exercise an option of opening the mail or deleting it but this does not mean that you will use very tempting and tantalizing subject lines like free holiday trip to florida open and become bill gates stay in forever now don't use such subject lines unless you mean something serious nor should you over emphasize the subject by capitalizing them or by creating a false sense of urgency now as the story goes the employees of a reputed computer manufacturing company never responded to their managers emails immediately despite the standard subject line urgent matter respond immediately all in caps all the mails he sent or have this message now what happened the employees simply lost feeling about this sense of urgency because all the mails carried this in capital letters so be mindful about it use short descriptive phrase for the subject line indicating the gist of the email if it is a meeting so subject lines are very very important and it's very important that you use a short descriptive phrase for the subject line indicating the gist of the email if i would ask you before you send an email if i were there to ask you how would you describe your email in a single word or at least in two words so you would say buying something requesting something asking somebody to do something now just mention that in the subject line sometimes it may be an invitation sometimes it may be information informing people to do something now let everything come on the subject line in a capsule form in a word in two words or in a small short phrase you do not have to worry about writing grammatically correct sentences on the subject line in fact you can omit prepositions articles and then just use the main words or the key words or the head words those words will communicate the ideas very effectively now look at uh, the example in case of convening a meeting and if you are the person who is responsible for inviting all and you are convening the meeting now what should you do mention the time date 
and when you in the subject line itself i'm giving an example of a localized context in within iit kanpur environment look at this dpgc meeting 21st june 2011 10 am fb 620 now all the people in iit kanpur will understand dpgc in place for the departments post graduate committee and it has a meeting to be conducted on this particular month date day year time and fb everybody understands it's the faculty building the main building where faculty and their officers are there so they know it very well when this is given on the title itself now what is the advantage when it is on the Uh, subject line people can very quickly know okay there is a meeting and the meeting is to be held on this day at this time and this is the venue now the person can decide whether i should read the agenda of the meeting whether i should know what is there in the meeting or the person can simply think oh 10 am i have a class i have another appointment on the same day i won't be able to go to the meeting and the person can also decide if it is relevant if he is a very important member in the meeting to send a reply saying that the person won't be able to attend the meeting or even requesting the concerned person that the meeting may be postponed or slightly rescheduled according to the time of the person you can see now the advantage of putting these important details on the subject line as far as the meeting is concerned now if it is an email in invitation for a talk what you can do is you can add certain other things like you can add the name of the speaker and even the topic on the subject line you don't have to mind that sometimes the subject line is becoming lengthier than what i said just should be a phrase or two or three words in this case putting the name of the person and the subject these two items are the ones which are going to attract the audience so in this case you can just mention the topic talk on cybernetics so again in an environment like iit many people are uh, gravitated towards this talk on cybernetics and especially by somebody like kevin warwick supposed to be one of the pioneering scientist in uh, cybernetic studies now when somebody like this person is giving a talk it's very important you put the person's name in the subject line so that the people know it's not just any other talk on cybernetics but it's a very special very important very interesting talk on cybernetics where is it lh16 again in the local context people understand it is lecture hall 16 and then the date and the time is given because here date and time follows the first important aspect of topic and the name of the speaker then doing this you will be actually helping the receiver to have a very quick idea about the mail even without opening it so if you quickly recapitulate what i said about subject lines i said at the beginning that they are very significant and the worst form of a subject line is something that is going as no subject and when something is going as no subject it reflects the mindless attitude of the person who doesn't have time or who doesn't think that he should bother about putting a subject line so that the other person saves lot of time so it reflects the person's attitude and then i also said that don't put flashy titles don't also over emphasize by using capital letters in due course of time even that over emphasize loses the little emphasis that it can get as in case of the employer's example that i suggested and finally i said even if you are not going to put just two three words in certain cases like convening a meeting inviting people for some workshop inviting people for a talk it's important that if the speaker is a very important person you put even the name of the speaker on the subject line so that the people are attracted towards the uh, talk and if required they'll open it and get the details if not required they'll just look at it 
they'll even know the time even without opening it as i said the time for the receiver is as precious as your time so take note of it and empathize and always put yourself into the shoes of the other person keep it short focus to the content make it clearly visible in the subject line and if you remember these simple norms definitely your email communication will become very effective now are these the only norms no there are some more norms we will continue about those norms in the next lecture which is again on etiquette but we'll just focus on some more norms of etiquette in continuation with this thank you so much